just what exactly is this wand all about? And and the bottom the bottom line is we're going to have a little bit of education here, and then we're going to tell you how the wand is really working. And so the bottom line is we have to look at some things going on in your. Start over. Thank you, uh, Dr. Cochran. Please, uh, you have the floor here. Go ahead and uh, tell us what you've been doing with the wand. Okay. So, first of all, a little bit of an a little bit of anatomy. Bone marrow is obviously a very important component of your body, and basically, the bone marrow is inside the bones. Now, you got round bones and you got flat bones, but inside those bones is where the bone marrow is. And the bone marrow specifically makes what we call stem cells. Now, some people may have a question on what is a stem cell? Well, basically, a stem cell is a hibernating cell that's kind of hanging out inside the bones. So when your body needs some special cells, your brain will tell, tell those, those hibernating cells, first of all, to wake up. And then after they tell you, after they're awake, your brain's going to tell you where to go in the body and change into the type of cells that you need. So I'll give you an example. Let's say your body's a little, needs some more red blood cells. So the brain picks that up and the brain sends a signal to the bone marrow and it says, hey, bone marrow, I need some of these guys that are asleep called stem cells. I need them to go over here to another area in the body, and I need them to change into to red blood cells. And so that's exactly what it happens. So a stem cell is a cell that's ready to change into something else that your body needs. And it is controlled, prime, it is controlled by your brain. Well, in order for your brain to communicate with the bone marrow, there's got to be a connection, and that's called a chakra or a wiring harness. And if you look at the information that is with the wand and other information, information out there, there's chakras, and there's seven of them. And they start on your tailbone, basically, and go all the way through your body. Well, there's one chakra that's ex extremely important, and it's the one that controls the wiring harness in your body, and it's called chakra number seven or the crown chakra. And this is one of the most important chakras because it controls the entire wiring harness for every cell in your body. So let's give an example. Let's say you got a car, all right, or any motorized vehicle, whether it be a car, a motorcycle, anything like that. There's a computer somewhere or a control center somewhere in that motorized unit that controls other parts of that unit, whether it be a car, a motorcycle, an airplane, you know, an uh, electric bike, whatever. But what you have to understand is that wiring harness, if it shorts out, you lose communication between the controller. So in a car, if you have a short circuit in a wiring harness, the computer can run fine, but it, the part that the wiring harness goes to, if it can't read it or can't send a signal, up to the to the computer, then the computer doesn't know what to do. Your body's the same way. So you got your brain, which is your computer. You got your wiring harness, which is an electrical and or energy lines that run through your body called meridians, and that's from Eastern medicine, acupuncture. Maybe some folks have heard about acupuncture meridians. They're not any more than electrical wiring harness and an energy line. You've got to have that wiring harness working right to go to parts of your body. So if your wiring harness isn't working right, guess what? Your car is not going to run right. There's no difference between a car and the body. And what's interesting is 
that the electrical current in a car is called DC or direct current. The electrical current in the body is also DC current. Now, I find that very interesting. So what we want to do is we want to get the brain and the rest of the body communicating properly to the cells of the body. So if you have an area that needs some additional new cells, the body can make that happen. So how does this all work? So first of all, they, I have taken, I've looked at all the information, and I've been using the wand. Now, I've been practicing 43 years, and 43 years, um, and I have other programs, and I use other things, but I have never seen people change so fast until I started using the frequency or the wand. And here's the reason why. Because the wand has an energy frequency of 30 to 30,000 megahertz. That's basically like music, cellular music. So when you listen to music, it has a sine wave, and it gives off an energy wave, and it's a sine wave. Well, guess what? Every cell whether it be good or bad, gives off this sine wave, so I call it cellular music. Well, the megahertz of 30 to 30, 30 to 3,000, which is the frequency on the wand, is the perfect healing music for the cells. So why wouldn't we expect some major changes occurring in the body if you're giving the right kind of music to the cell, and you're going to. So the wand has two purposes. One, it has a heat issue, not an issue, a heat procedure and a frequency procedure. Now, the frequency or the music to the cells stays with all of the different settings. So you're getting ready to use uh, a medium heat, a high heat, or a cool heat, you're getting the frequency or music to the cells. So I want to bring up a point because we've got all kinds of questions about where do I use the heat? How do I do this? Well, first of all, most illness or disease in the body is called, caused by inflammation or an autoimmune response. And when you're dealing with autoimmune and inflammation, you do not want to use high heat because you've already got heat in there. So you want to use the cooler frequency. So if you have an autoimmune or inflammatory condition and you put high heat in there, there's a high probability that you can make it worse. But if you use a cool heat, it won't make it worse. So the bottom line is if you... The bottom line is to tell you guys straight up, I don't use the heat. I use the cool therapy, the cool frequency. And because I don't want to create more inflammation, I want to decrease the inflammation. I still have the frequency going into the cells of the body. And that's a very important factor. So I'm going to just suggest to you guys Take a very complicated application and make it real simple. And this is what I use on my patients, and I am seeing all kinds of improvement. Number one, you want to use, and I'm talking cold, cold, cold frequency. Now, if you choose to use the medium or the really hot frequency, uh, that's up to you. But I'm talking cool frequency. Number one, you want to go to the root chakra. That's the chakra over the tailbone area. And you can go in a counterclockwise area, and you can look the chakras up online, and you can get a good idea where they're, where they're hanging out at. But the number one is the root chakra, and that's in the tailbone area. So you can take your wand with your little blue light, and I'm using cold cool cool frequency, and I 
You can either do a circle or you can just hold it there in the middle of the tailbone for about five minutes, maybe ten. It's up to you. Now, the other and most important point is the crown chakra because that's the governing chakra, and that has, that's what it's called. And it's interesting because it interconnects all the other energy and electrical channels in the cells of your body. So the where, do, where do you find it? It's real easy. Tuck your chin down and locate the highest point at the top of your head. That's chakra number seven. Now, all you have to do is take the frequency and you have to just locate it on the top of the head. Now, because it goes about 10 inches into your body, you don't have to worry. About, it's going to go right through your hands. So you can just, you can, you can just feel the heat, and it just has to be in the vicinity. Now, here's what you're going to see. Number one, 10 to 15 minutes on that chakra. That's it. And or your body is going to start making changes. It can be tingling. It could be muscle tightness. It can be all kinds of symptoms that you've had either current or in the past. But here's the important part. You have to keep doing that light on that chakra until the symptoms change in your body. And they will change because your brain is going to recalibrate what's going on in your body. And it will wave down through your body. When it gets, whatever it is, gets to the bottom of your toes, you're done. So what, what it, you start at the crown. You go 10 to 15 minutes. That's max. Now, I know, the, I know it says that you can do up to two hours. Well, I haven't used two hours on anybody. The most I use is 10, 15 minutes. And it goes right down through the body. So if you're on the crown or the chakra seven and you got the light shining there and all of a sudden – you have a knee problem, and it starts getting worse. Stay on the chakra because the body is going to make the change. Don't stop because your brain is saying, oh, well, I got a problem over here in my knee. I got to send some stem cells that way to start helping it improve. And that when the improvement starts happening, the symptoms will start decreasing. And the reason that I've simplified this is because you, I know what they hand out with the, the wands, and I'm not opposed to that. I agree with it. But I have found that it makes it way too complicated and way too long to do it. So why don't you take five minutes and put it on your tailbone and put 10 to 15 minutes on the top of your head and let your body do its thing? Now, I can tell you all kinds of different things that are happening, but I'm not going to get into that tonight because the philosophy is let's make it simple, let's make it doable, and just let the body do what it is meant to do. So bottom line, put I'm using the cold or the cool frequency. Bottom line, put it in the middle of your tailbone, for about five minutes, and you may not feel anything anywhere, but put it on there anyway. And then go to the top of your head, 10 to 15 minutes, and if things start, and things will start moving around in your body. I haven't had anybody that has not had changes occurring in their body. And so put it on the top of your head for 10 or 15 minutes, up to 15, I'll say, Okay. Or if the symptoms work their way down through your body, just stay with it because they will start to get go away and wait till they get to your toes. And when they hit to your toes, it could be five minutes, turn off the wand. You're done for the day. That's what we're doing. And I'm seeing all kinds of changes. Now, 
I know there's a video out that shows and it says that works on this and that and this and that. Well, that's okay if you're out of the United States, but you can't make those claims in the United States because if you do, you're going to get in trouble. So all I'm going to say to you is look at that video, and it te- it's from Malaysia, I believe, and it talks about all the different types of conditions that the wand can work on. And I can tell you straight out, I've seen these conditions change right before my eyes. And I've seen it. My patients are calling me wanting to know, why didn't you start using this earlier on? And my answer is, I didn't know about it. And so once, and I include it with all of my patient treatments, hands down, if you're going to see me, you're going to be dealing with a wand, period. And that's what I've got to say tonight. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Cochran. That was amazing. Really appreciate your time.